Hey guys, so for those of you who already know from my other channel, this is Thunder. He's a Bernese Mountain Dog. I believe he is six or seven years old now. I've only groomed him, oh, and he's leaning his entire body weight into me. I've only groomed him about three times, so this is his fourth groom. He is a little bit nervous because he did not get introduced to grooming when he was young. He got introduced to it a little bit later in life. So he's a little bit nervous for the groom, but he's a really good dog. He is blowing a lot of coat today, so there will definitely be a fernado. So stay tuned for the rest of his groom because it's really satisfying how he turns out at the end. So I'm bathing him first in just a regular, de uh, sorry, not de-shedding, just a regular degreasing shampoo. And then I'm gonna go back over him with the shedding shampoo. He's really dirty, so he's gonna need two baths in order to get him really clean and really lathered. Good boy, Thunder. You're being much better this time than last time. Last time you tried to bulldoze your way out of the shower. No, don't do it. No backing out of the shower. No. He's gonna try. That's his famous move. Okay, no, you can't, I can't move you. Let's give you more shampoo because you're dirty. So I'm just doing a quick scrub on him just to get him a little bit more clean before I use the de-shedding shampoo. I'm gonna wash his face at the end. It's the last thing you should do, last place that the shampoo should touch should be the face. You're okay. Yes, you're okay. I must wash your bum. I am sorry. Okay, now we're doing de-shedding. So Thunder's owners adopted him. I can't remember how old he was when they adopted him, but a lot of people don't get their dogs groomed, which is totally fine. A dog like this, um, Thunder doesn't come in matted, so if he's not going to the professional groomers, it's fine. I grew up with Rottweilers. We didn't take them to the professional groomers. Um, but a dog like this gets very compacted undercoat, and that compaction actually leads them to get very hot during the warm months. So the owners realized that when they got him groomed for the first time and all of that coat was removed, he was a lot more active. And that's likely because he was far less hot and so therefore had more energy to do things. And it can be really, really difficult to remove that undercoat with just a brush. Coming to the groomers and bathing them and blowing out their coat is going to do obviously a way better job. So that's something to note if you've never had your dog groomed before especially if they have such a thick coat like Thunder does. You have to hold the nozzle really close to the coat, otherwise the shampoo will not penetrate down to the skin and the bottom layer will actually remain dry, which means you're not getting the dog effectively clean. One of the things that I realized when training people how to groom is that one of the things that they really don't know how to do is how to properly bathe a dog. You would think it's pretty straightforward, but it's really not. So many times the dogs came out dirty or they still stunk. 
and it's because a lot of people don't realize that you usually need more than one shampoo and you really have to get down to the skin in order to get them clean. Otherwise, that's just not a proper job and it's not acceptable in a grooming salon to send a dog home that still stinks. Dirt. It's like trying to move a giant boulder. And I'm out of breath. Okay, up. Like, believe it or not, I have washed this back end now. Like three times I've hit it with soap and it's still, the soap is still not down to the skin. I have to use more soap and more water pressure because I cannot get it clean. I'm using some straight shampoo now to try to get his underbelly and his back end. Because his back end is super compacted. A lot of hair is gonna come out of there. So the compaction is what's making it difficult for the water and the soap to reach the skin. No, no, no shaking. No, no shake. So, so far his bath in total has taken me 35 minutes just to bathe him. And that doesn't even start with everything else that we have to do, right buddy? Okay, now we're gonna blow dry him with the high velocity dryer, which he hates, right? Sorry. We finally found a happy hoodie that fits him. Uh, something to note about the happy hoodies is that if you have a dog with collapsing trachea, you should not use one. That's something that I haven't mentioned before, so just letting you know it's not safe to use if your dog has a trachea problem. Okay, buddy, you're gonna be okay? You're gonna be okay. Are you tired now? That was a lot of work. No more blow dryer. So it took an hour and 45 minutes to bathe and blow dry him. Now I did have help. My boyfriend helped me dry him. Thankfully I have his help, otherwise it would have taken me a lot longer. So that was with two blow dryers going. And it's still, the bath and dry still took an hour and 45 minutes. So that means that the blow dry itself took about an hour, right? We did give him a break, so a little bit of a break in there as well. I'm just combing him out a little bit and then I am going to go over him with the undercoat rake.
It's okay, buddy. Stay. Nature's Choice Ear Cleaner, just pouring that onto a makeup pad. Okay, now give me that big giant ear. You can also pour the cleaner inside the ear, but the dog tends to shake a lot afterwards and then ear cleaner gets all over the dog, so I prefer to pour it on the makeup pad. And they prefer it too. See? Gross. Hey Thunder, sugar cookie cologne today. And you're all done. So I'm gonna take him outside while he waits for his owner. He'll probably go pee and then I guarantee you he's gonna lay down and go right to sleep because he's exhausted. Right? Bandana. Oh yeah, you need a bandana. Thanks for reminding me.